Greetings, loved ones. Let's take a chance. It's time for Amanda <laughs> Exclusivo. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Amanda Exclusivo. Joining me today is Jesse Palmer's doppelganger. <laughs> Let's welcome Clayton. <laughs> I've heard that a few times. I know. Uh, I know not, you were. I it's know. It's not bad, though. It's really not a bad. It's a compliment. Um, it's yeah, no, a whatever. compliment. Jesse, uh, he's a good looking dude. So if I can be in the same caliber as him or category, then then I'm doing something right, I suppose. Well, I'm glad that you like that. That was that was my introduction for you. Either way, I'm like, that's what I have to do for Clayton. You're, you're going for it no matter what. You're like, no oh, matter, yeah. No I'm like, Clayton's going to love it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do enjoy it. And I've had plenty of worse uh, intros um, and things said. So that's a, that's a very big positive. Starting off the Friday on a good note. I always like to start things off on a good note, Clayton, but <laughs> how are you? What's life like for you now? Um, life's been good. Yeah. I've uh, a lot going on, just like trying to um, get th things up and running. Uh, I just recently released a book that I've been super proud of. It took me about nine months to, to create. So well, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. Say it's like my baby. Uh, it took me nine months to exactly to make. So, um, but it's been awesome. Uh yeah, just the transition into a new stage of my life, next chapter, like a lot of moving parts, like my mentality switching, um, finding more self-belief. Like it's been a really fun, but kind of scary transition because there's just so many, there's just so, because I, I feel like I'm having a, I'm having a mindset change and I'm rooted. I'm right in the middle of the mindset change from like the self-doubt to self-belief mentality um, I, I don't know what the next day looks like for, uh, job opportunities, or like my career, I'm doing things I'm passionate about, but they're kind of sporadic. Uh, they're not, nothing is like stable right now. So I don't have a stable structure around me as far as work goes. I don't have a stable structure around me as far as my mentality right now. Like there's a lack of structure and it's not a bad thing. Um, it's it's something I'm choosing because I could go back into medical sales and find that stability in a heartbeat. But uh, I'm in this fluid stage, I suppose, where I'm like, yeah, you don't have the structure, but you're building it and you're close to finishing uh, something that you can rely upon. And it's going to be a good thing. So what are yeah. you talking about structure? Because I see on your Instagram, you're always at the gym. You have a routine. I need a personal trainer. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's it's so interesting because it really boils down to perspective. So what someone perceives of my life, they may think I have it all together. Um, but that's the fascinating part about mental health is like it really comes down to the individual and what they perceive because that's their reality. Even if everybody else tells them, well, this is what we see. I've That's something that I struggle with a lot growing up is always having this altered perception of reality. Uh, and, and I don't know, I, oh, I know what caused it for a while. It was insecurities I had or at this point in my life, it doesn't feel like an insecurity any longer. It just seems like a sense of drive, like determination to achieve this purpose. And so I look at myself and I'm like, I'm an unfinished pro product, but like, as long as I continue to see myself that way, I'll keep working towards whatever I'm trying to build. And I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> that's the, that's the thing. Well, I mean, listen, I think you have a routine because I follow you on Instagram and I see everything that you're up to. You have more of a routine than I do. <laughs> that's yeah, for sure. but I'm like based again, we all know that Instagram is a highlight reel, right? So we, yeah, that's true. People, people show you what they want to show you, right? I edit those clips. I make them look fancy. I put some music behind them. I really yeah. dress, up. I dress up what I post. Right. And then I post it. So you know, there it's, it, it's, it's a small part of my life. You know, those, those parts of the day, the workout videos, that's an hour out of my day that someone's seeing, right. The, um, reflective videos where I'm talking to the camera that takes me like 30 minutes to do. So you're looking, you're seeing an hour and 30 minutes of my day, right. There's, there's so much else that, uh, that I guess I'm, 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 I'm taking into account as I, as I tell you, I have a lack of structure. Maybe I have structure in those hour, that hour and 30, but uh, <laughs> The rest of the day, there's a, uh, fortunately, there's many more hours to, to work with. So what else have you been doing in your free time? Are you, are you dating? Like what's going on there? Yeah, it's interesting. I, right now, I guess I, I'm open to dating. Uh, I'm having conversations with women. Like I'm exploring, Good. 
but I, I feel that I always come back to this place of like in this moment, I feel that I'm still working on myself. So it's not that I'm not ready to let somebody in, mm -hmm. but between like writing the book, I mean, getting that out has been a, uh, it's been really exciting, but it's also been like a relief because it's been nine months in the making and it took a lot of my time up getting the, like my real estate license. I'll probably get that in the next week or two. That's been taken. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. But like, that's been taken up, you know, studying eight hours a day for it for the last three or four months um, on and off. And then, um, you know, some guy could do some mental health speaking travel for these, you know, some, these dating game show hosting <laughs> that I did in South Carolina recently. Like my life is just exciting. Uh, every day I wake up, something's new that happens. I get a text message. That's like, would you want to do this? And I become a yes, man, I guess is, is the way I've seen it. And it's exciting. It's like, oh, I get to wake up and I don't know what, what's going to hit me, you know, what, what my phone is going to say. And <laughs> I'm just doing all, I'm just taking on a bunch of things. And I think that's, that's amazing. It's fun though. Cause I'm figuring out what I like and what I don't. So back to, you know, dating and you're talking to women, are the women asking you about your time on the bachelor? Cause I definitely do want to talk about that before we touch upon your book. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a part of my life. It's a part of it's, so this is this is interesting. So I I I, fr I, I reframe a lot of things in my head. Like uh, the the experience was very insightful, uh, but also very tumultuous. So it's interesting when I recount it all. Uh, I almost view it as a dream, and I don't I, I don't know if that's a protective mechanism that my brain is basically trying to make it seem like it didn't really actually happen. But when I recount it, it's just like it's it feels as if I'm I'm, I'm talking about a a very vivid dream. So. Uh, but I, I do get a lot of people that ask me about it. And I always just say, you know, that's something I did. It's not who I am. And, and that's, I think I, I've talked a lot with therapists and such, uh, and they talk about this dissociation of, um, events in our lives. And, uh, also like, I just, like, when we were trying to be able to, um, overcome them or better manage them, it's about being able to separate them from our identity. And so, I just tell women that I talk to that this is very much a part of, has been a part of my life, but it's not who I am. It's who I was, uh, but it doesn't dictate, I guess it does dictate who I'll become because I've, I've learned a lot from it. No, so sure. yeah. what was it like place. being the bachelor? Uh, it's hard to explain. It's like, imagine, um, I don't know if you've ever had one of these dreams. It's in the movie Inception, I believe. Uh, so have you seen the movie Inception? No. <laughs> okay. You can tell me about it. <laughs> so there's a part There's a part in the movie. It's my favorite movie. Um, but there's a part in the movie where um, they they infiltrate like this person's mind. It's a really wild, wild, wild movie. They infiltrate their mind and like they're living, they're in their head, in their dream. And they're like trying to get this person to convince themselves through through like interacting in their dreams for them to like some make them make some type of negotiation. Anyways, part I'm getting at is that uh, there's a point where like the mind of the person realizes that they have infiltrated their mind. And so like they become aware and every other person in that dream, like all of the uh, uh, humans in that dream of theirs, like they all turn and their eyes are, they're all staring at that one person. And they're like, oh, this is super overwhelming. Like we're, we've been spotted and it's like really uncomfortable because everyone's eyes, thousands of eyes are just on you. That feeling when I watch that part of the movie is how it feels to be The Bachelor. That's um, actually a good way to put it. I never really thought about it that way. Yeah. Now Imagine, I gotta watch Inception. <laughs> yeah, if you see that part of the movie, um, that is exactly how it feels. You go from nobody noticing you to it seemingly every single eye, especially at the height of the show, every eye is on you. And it just feels like you're constantly being watched and everything you do uh, is being analyzed and not even on the show, but like when you are done with the show, you go out in public. Uh, I had a lot of social anxiety that I had to overcome because when I went out in public, I would see people like from afar, you know, filming me um, or people right. like pointing, the, the tapping their friend being like, Hey, look, like it's him. And it just feels like that movie. And that's the best way I can describe it. You go from, I went from a Midwest guy, just thousand followers on Instagram. No, no one knew who I was to like being watched on TV by 6 million people. And it felt like ever since that point, um, I just feel like I'm always under surveillance.
So that's kind of the way I would describe The Bachelor, how it feels. No, that's Being, that's a good way to put it. So let's talk about your season in a more positive light. What were some of your favorite memories? from being the bachelor you've traveled to so many great places like iceland croatia so. yeah um all of those things were awesome uh actually toronto was my, one of my favorite places of all oh, the places toronto. yeah i loved it it was uh king street that it was it was so beautiful the people were awesome it was a clean city um i love that but i also loved austria i love the architecture uh everything was kind of gothic uh the cathedrals uh, it just had all this old you know, old style buildings. Uh, and it was so awesome. The cobblestone roads, uh, it, it was just a completely different culture. And so I, I loved the fact that I was exposed to so much, um, different cultures. Uh, and I liked that because I grew up in Missouri my entire life. So I had a very narrow minded viewpoint of what else I didn't know what else is out there. Ignorance was bliss, but now I've, you know, seen it. And so I really appreciate all the different, um, perspectives that I've been exposed to. And also with the women too, like they, um, you know, 30 different women, they all carry different perspectives and it helped me start to learn more about, um, you know, others and, and their feelings, especially when it comes to like intimacy and conversations centered around, um, centered around dating and all that. Like my, I learned a lot about myself and where I was lacking. So, uh, the positives were a lot of my, uh, shortcomings were brought to the surface, but that's a positive to me because it helped me grow. That's a good way to put it. So how is Clayton the Bachelor different than Clayton now? Um, I would say I'm more emotionally mature because I had I had to really reflect, sacrifice my ego. I had one on the show. Uh, it was rooted in insecurity, trying to protect me at all points. Um, I wasn't able to see the other side because I was so focused on trying to keep everybody happy that I was willing to do whatever it took. So I lost myself on the show. I, I tried to please the women, the producers, me, the fans, and you can't please all every, everyone at once. It's not possible. Um, but that was me, the bachelor, you know, Clayton, the insecure individual that was trying to make everyone happy um, and was willing to do whatever it took to, to try to make that a reality who I am now is the polar opposite. Like, I don't care, um, anymore about trying to please everybody. I'm just me. And I'm like, this is who you get. You're going to see my authentic self. And if you don't like me, okay. And it's not like F you, if you don't like me, it's just like, okay. <laughs> it's just like, you don't like me. I don't lose sleep over it. You you're entitled to your opinion and I'm not mad at you for it. Like I can be an acquired taste. I get it. It's totally fine. Uh, it just brought a lot more peace though. Yeah. So that's like, that's where I'm at today is I'm just, a little bit more emotionally mature, a little bit more in tune with my emotions, uh, like on a day to day basis. I just I feel, feel more grounded, more confident. So yeah, that's that's a big, pretty big. Got to be selfish, Clayton. Put yourself first, you know. There's a sense of selfishness. I've been pretty selfish these last. That's probably why with the dating scene, I've kind of not, I've kind of taken a hiatus because I've really been selfish. I prioritized my mental health. I prioritized my success and uh, it hasn't left much room for a significant other to come into the picture. But for me, I feel like it's essential. Uh, I have to love myself. I have to find stability in my own life before I expect to bring somebody else in and subject them to, God forbid, I wouldn't want to subject them to this instability and a lack of love. So I'm just getting those things sorted out. Well, technically your baby right now is your book, but congratulations. You are now an author, 180 degrees. So tell us what your book's about. Yeah. So in a nutshell, uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a story from, uh, navigating from self-doubt to self-belief. So I, I call it self-doubt to me. It was the path of death. Um, because I think the more you doubt yourself, the, and you lack that ability to have belief, the more likely you are to venture down this path that could lead to, uh, feelings of hopelessness and isolation, which could lead to, death, um, as I've found with many individuals I've spoken with and where I had this, these suicidal thoughts, um, it's when I was hopeless, uh, and I, I didn't feel that I, I felt isolated and I felt that I couldn't fit in and, and I wasn't good enough. And so I talk about that, that path, but then how I've been able to reorient myself 180 degrees in the opposite direction to this place of self-belief where like, I, I have self-belief that self-confidence, that love. Um, and I talk about these, six pillars in the book, 30 degrees at a time, six times 30, 180. I talk about how ah, like, that's how it came about that. Okay. So it's, uh, it's, it's communication. It's all the Asians. All right. It's communication, education, preparation, determination, 
congregation, realization. They're all in that order for a reason, um, based off of how quickly people can enact it in their lives. So communication, education, you can do that right now. Someone can communicate more today. They can educate themselves more today. But the tail end, the congregation, building a trusted group of individuals, that takes time. Realization, that takes time. Um, you have to have ex lived experiences. So I was pretty excited how I like chopped them all up. They all play on each other. But I talk about how you have to, in my life, how I worked through each of these areas to build upon each other to get to this realization point that like self-confidence, self-belief comes from within. And that's the internal validation. I don't need this external validation I've been seeking. So that's the story of the 180 degrees, how I've shifted my mindset. And then my hope is that others read the story and go, okay, I can also start to make this shift. That's amazing. I'm, I'm really proud of you for writing a book. I obviously have watched your season from beginning to end. And I'm like, I think Clayton's a really good guy. I like Clayton and I was there rooting for you all along, seriously. And, you know, I feel like I learned that. a lot about you throughout your time on The Bachelor as well. And did you incorporate anything you learned from the show in your book? Oh, yeah. I mean, every the book is essentially is as a journal. Um, if, if you're reading it, you're, you're base. It, I've, I've had already people read it and they said, it feels as though a friend is writing something to me. And that's really what you're going to get when you read it. It's going to come across as like, it's a friend speaking to you about their journey and sharing their experiences. And it should be very, it's very informal. It's very, uh, just taking you through my life and, and opening up and being vulnerable and, talking about the depression, anxiety, the body dysmorphia, the suicidal thoughts, just opening up and saying, this is my, me and I'm bringing you with me on this journey um, that I got from the show. I use the word journey a ton now, um, which is a big, <laughs> it's a big word for the show. Uh, everyone, they, that's their, like, talk about the journey. Is dramatic now. also in the dictionary? Um, I I don't even know if this I use the journey. Word. I don't know if I <laughs> I don't know if I even use the word dramatic at any point in the book. Um, I could be way off, but I don't feel like I use it a lot in my day. -to -day. Journey is probably the most popular word though. Yeah. And it's, it's a lot used in my book. I mean, it's there everywhere. So yeah, the, everything that I wrote about was about these realizations that I'd come to. And a lot of it, the catalyst was the show I, I put in the book. And I say, I've said this many times, if I had a happy ending where I wrote off into the sunset, with, you know, hand in hand with Susie and all was all was well. And I got this incredible edit. I wouldn't have written the book and I wouldn't be speaking on mental health today because I would have just, you know, wouldn't have went through all these. You got a very positive compliment from Susie. I saw she's like, go buy the copy. It's great. So oh, yeah, we're, we're so we're very, very supportive. And I, I hope that's a lesson people learn through all of this. Like people can see this, this story of resiliency, perseverance, but they can also see the story of um, hey, you can have healthy relationships with, with your exes. You don't have to like cut off ties and not be supportive. Uh, you can have these 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 encouraging and supportive relationships that 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 you know they trans they transform. They're they're no longer intimate, but they're now just it's like we do see each other as friends. And That's after great. everything, and after everything we've been through, like we want each other to find that happiness. I mean, because we've been through so much, so. Um, yeah, I, I just hope people see that. And people, I see it online, they question it. All these, I, I just saw recently, some people like they're faking it. I was like, okay, this is what's sad about society is you're seeing two genuine people have these interactions and we're just having fun with it. People are like, take this offline. I was like, why? I can't respond. Yeah, why? I respond to all my friends online. I respond to all my best friends on Instagram if I see them post something. And it's sad because society, everyone's, they think it's forced. They think it's an act. I'm like, that's, what's bad is like, why is this not commonplace for two exes to just be cordial and supportive of one another? It's not an act. I'm not doing it to like, to get people to talk about it. I'm just share, I'm taught reacting to her as if I'm reacting to any of my buddies that are on social media. Like I'm like, ask yourself that question. Do I, if my buddy, Brandon from the show, do I have to like, can I not respond to his messages on DMS? Like, do I have <laughs> I have to text him and be like, Hey, I just saw your post. And I wanted to respond to this in this way in private. It's like, no, why it's, it's just weird that people get so um, it's not normal, I guess. And, and, but that's no, why God. it's about breaking the stigma. It's like, you don't have to have these unhealthy relationship with your, with your exes. It can be supportive. And trust me, it's way nicer when you have that. No, that's a good way to put it. Cause I know bachelor nation was going crazy when they saw on TikTok that you were with Rachel and Michelle. So it seems yeah. like you still do have a healthy relationship with them. 
And that's again, like the first thing I read and I, it's great. Cause I'm in a place where I'm just like, I don't care anymore. I laugh at it, but I, yeah. I, I still, read, I still read it. Cause I still like to see if I can pull constructive criticism or maybe there is some type of weakness or shortcoming that, that I could pick up from like someone's comment. So I still like care, like I care about trying to glean experience or, or, or an insight from someone's words. So I value people's opinions. Um, doesn't mean I place as much weight in them though as I once used to, but, uh, yeah, like I was hanging out with those two and people I saw in the comments are people that were like, this is weird. Like this is all, you know, well, I, I get this one. This is all for clout and they're just faking this. And it's like, I do get that actually. Um, and, and to that, I would say, listen, I, I know that like it brings more attention to my page and for what I'm pushing mental health, I want more eyes on it. So, um, you know, I also though, more than anything, just wanted to have a positive relationship with my ex. And so when I first saw Rachel for the first time, I was like, I just want us to be good now. Like, hopefully we've been able to outgrow this pain and, and we're able to forgive one another. And more it was about her forgiving me. Cause I, I didn't really have any reason to not forgive her. I had, you know, been like that, that stage was way beyond or like had passed, but, uh, but yeah, like I was just happy whenever we met up and, and, uh, I was like, Oh, we're good. You know, like we understand each other. We had these big, deep conversations and it was like, cool. So we're friends and it was great. And then it was like, let's just have fun with this. Yeah. It's like, let's have fun with this. Everyone's like, they're doing this for attention. I was like, you know what? I don't, if you, if this gets 10, you know, 10 times more eyes on my (laughs) page and I'm talking about mental health, please. Like I'm all for it. I was like, absolutely. I will try to bring more traction because I'm doing, I'm using my platform for good. So like, I'm cool with playing this up. Um, But it was more just everyone was going crazy. And I was yeah, like, I'm, I'm gonna ask Clayton about this. What's going on? No, I just want to be, I was like, hey, let people like speculate, let them have fun with it. Like it shouldn't be that serious. But the overarching theme that I hope it shows is like, mm-hmm. again, positive, healthy relationships with your ex should be a thing. Cause like, it's way nicer. I don't have to wake up and be like, oh, is Rachel or Susie or Gabby going to fire off at me today and, and throw me under the bus for right. something? I don't have to worry about that. It's not, it's not a thing. It's, and then when you hold, you hold less, you hold less anger. Like I don't have any anger towards any of my exes or any of the people in my past. And like, so I am happier because I don't hold this resentment. So I'm like, guys, this is what I'm trying to really get across to you all. And if it gets a couple more eyes on my page in the meantime, that's great. That's a, that's a byproduct of it. <laughs> and take a look at the things that I'm pushing out They're They're, they're, they're meant to help. But you know what else got some eyes on your page though? Um, your pizza reviews. <laughs> we need a more bit. clayton a little bit uh yeah there's like a, it was a game of roses there's a uh i instagram account where they really started hyping me up about eating pizza and grand <laughs> pizza so that was one of my uh, i was like yeah d- go ahead no one has to hype me up but if you want to like i love pizza so make yeah next time we chat we're gonna we're gonna sample some pizzas we'll we'll okay. do like a pizza test for sure that'll yeah. be fun yeah, my last one was pretty on off the off the cuff. Uh, I think I can always do better. <laughs> you got to inject more humor into it, but I was just like, exactly. Yeah, I uh, I didn't. It wasn't a live pizza review. It was the next day pizza review. That's okay. I mean, listen, that's what we want to see. What's next for you? <laughs> uh, sure, the occasional pizza review. I thought about having pizza tonight. I was already thinking about that, but I don't know if. I'll, oh, as you should. I don't know if I'll do a pizza <laughs> review tonight, but um, it might just be a, a pizza pizza night in peace. But uh, what's next for me? real estate license, get that. Um, hopefully start traveling around and speaking more on mental health with my book by my side, uh, spread my message of hope and resiliency and uh, self-belief to, to middle school, high school, and college age kids. That's kind of the demographic I'm trying to reach. So that's great. Uh, yeah, that's next. Well, congratulations on everything. And I'm really excited for you. Um, but before you go, Clayton, I was wondering if we could play a game. Okay. Fun. Don't worry. It's called uh, the speed yeah. round. I'm going to okay. ask you as many questions as I can within a minute. It's about you. Don't worry. Okay. I, might ruin this for you. I might ruin it for you because I'm not a speed round kind of guy, but I'll try. I'm going to try to be is just for once in my life. I'm going to try to be super to the point. Okay. All right. Well, let me know when you're ready. If you need to warm up or anything. I don't um, just need to fire off. I'll just say the first. Well, I, I got to be careful. I can't say the first thing that comes to my mind. That's when it gets me. <laughs> in trouble. We'll All see. Right, let me know when you're ready and I'm going to start the timer. Start. I actually need my pen. Hold on. Okay. Just to make sure how many questions you're going to answer. Okay. All right. What's Just the record? Me. Ooh, so someone from the circle, I don't know if you watch, his name is Shubham. He got yeah. 19 questions, 17, 17 questions, not 19. That's to break you out. 17. Uh, 17. Now, okay. 
I'm competitive. So, all right, all right, let's do it. I'm gonna try let's to see really- if you can beat him, and then I have to brag about you in every interview that I have. <laughs> I'm gonna give you answers that are so abstract. You're like, I need more. I'm like, nope, nope, keep going. <laughs> all right, let me know when you're ready, and I will start the timer. All right, let's do it. Clayton, I ask every bachelor, will you accept this rose? Yes. Great. NFL player or the bachelor? NFL. Best pizza topping? Uh, meat lovers. So all of them. Sausage. Squats or sit-ups? Squats. How many hours do you spend in the gym? Uh, a, a week. Uh, total, I spend about an hour and a half a day. Online dating, yay or nay? Uh, yeah. Croatia or Iceland? Croatia. Blondes or brunettes? Brunettes. <laughs> Blind date or setup? Uh, setup. Morning person or night owl? No morning. Beach or pool? A pool. Shower singer or dancer? Oh gosh, both. Shout <laughs> dancer. <laughs> Bachelor Nation BFF. Uh, Brandon. Best dish you can make? Uh, steak and eggs. Nike or Adidas? Nike. Best favorite football team? Raiders. What are you binging right now? Benching, 315 for five reps. And no, eight reps. <laughs> you are tied with Shubham. Ah, oh, tied? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, okay. had, we had the flow going, Clayton. We had the we did, flow we did. going. I hesitated a couple times there, but um, okay, I'll take a tie. No, All that right. was great. Now I have to bring both of you up. Yeah, now I'm making it harder on you. You got you to gotta now talk about two people, not one. I know. This isn't a two-on-one date, Clayton. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? They don't go over well, I can tell you that. So just so you're aware, you're going to have to weather the storm. I just enjoy watching. That's what I'm here for. I'm not oh. here to actually do <laughs> No, now you're in the thick of it. Now you're you're in it. So uh, good luck. That's all I can say. The rest of it's up to you. Well, congratulations on your book. Tell everyone where we can get your book. You can get my book, uh, easiest, way, easiest place to go. I mean, you can go to claytonacker.com, but you could also just go on my Instagram. That's where I post everything. And I have a link in my bio and it takes you to the website. You click it, goes to Amazon. It's all easy. It's all in one place. Everything well, I'm about- still waiting for my signed copy, Clayton, just saying. Okay, well, <laughs> you know what? I mean, send it my way. We can talk offline about that. I, I have had a few people ask and uh, I was yeah. like, I'm like, I was like, should I give out? I don't have a PO box. So should I give out my home address? I don't know. I'm moving soon, I guess. So maybe I'll get out by the time people f- figure it out. But yeah, I uh, I got to figure out a better way for that. I'm still working on that. <laughs> but seriously, congratulations. And I can't wait to see what you do next. And come back anytime to talk about whatever it is that you want. We could talk pizza. We could talk The Bachelor, Bachelorette, your book, whatever you want. All right, deal. We'll make it happen.